Windows 11 is a hot topic that people care about right now or sometimes just think they care about. And so we're testing it versus Windows 10, specifically with Alder Lake. In our reviews of Alder Lake, we explained why we used Windows 10 for our review testing. The primary reason was that it's more stable and it works. Asterisk sort of mostly other than the malware tendencies, but it pretty much works. Windows 11 is still new. It's getting regular updates. That makes testing something difficult. And it also has known bugs, both with Intel and especially with Ryzen, that have been getting worked out. So we used Windows 10, but we said we were coming back with the Windows 11 benchmark to compare. That's what we're doing today, because Intel has specifically recommended using Windows 11. Uh, and we wanted to show you why we decided it didn't really matter for our reviews process. Before that, this video is brought to you by Be Quiet and the Silent Base 802 case. The Silent Base 802 got high accolades in our review for its high build quality and its versatility in both silence focused and airflow focused build. The 802 comes with swappable mesh panels or noise damped panels, so you have options for either approach. The Silent Base 802 case is able to fit larger builds as well without being overbearing, and it stands out for its mechanics quality and assembly quality. Learn more about VQuiet's new case at the link in the description below. All right, so as we stated in our 12900K review, we had actually already done several Windows 11 tests with the 12900K leading into the review. So before even filming that review, we had some of the data we're going to go over here today and made the determination that actually Windows 10 is just going to be the best case for everybody for our type of testing. A couple things you need to understand. Benchmarking is not a linear thing where you just sort of hit the button and it goes. It does, in fact, have a lot of variables. And one of those is efficiency, where right now our benchmark suite and the suite of most reviewers looks at basically raw performance in a given task. And we sometimes do things like streaming benchmarks, we do multiple things at once. But for the most part, a measurement of just efficiency or the performance per watt is not something that's too commonly done. We take that number for Blender and some other all-core workloads, but Intel has complicated things that's not in a bad way with its efficient and its performance cores. And we do mean that in the sense of complicating it for good reasons. So we need to look at this again. Windows 10 was our platform because of the stability, because of the lack of bugs, and because 90% of users by the Steam hardware survey use it. Intel has, however, worked with Microsoft to make Windows 11 the ideal OS for Alder Lake, it says, for the hybrid architecture. From the reviewer's guide, quote, the performance hybrid architecture of 12th gen core processors takes advantage of critical new features in Windows 11 to improve performance. We strongly recommend that reviewers test with Windows 11 rather than previous versions of Windows. For our testing, we kept the BIOS settings exactly the same. We kept the memory the same, the cooler the same, everything the same, the GPU the same when moving to Windows 11. And the BIOS settings are obviously critical here too. We just swapped out the boot drives and we kept testing. Memory timings were kept exactly the same as they were with the Windows 10 tests. They were controlled. We continued to disable resizable bar as we did with Windows 10, and we manually disabled hardware accelerated GPU scheduling, which was off by default in Windows 10 and on by default in Windows 11. This is important to control if you want the like for like comparison without hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. You could turn them both on or both off, but they shouldn't be mixed. The most recent version of Windows 11 available through Windows Update was the one we used for all of our testing, and the same was used for Windows 10, the most recent version. So that should be enough for explaining the test setup. In other words, it was kept the same except for the Windows OS between the two sets of data. And some of these numbers, they move a couple percent one direction or the other. For the most part, just to give you the bottom line up front, it doesn't change a whole lot. Windows 10 tends to be better on average for all the like right now today for raw performance. But that's not looking at the efficiency, that means power is not a number that is in, in this equation. It's not involved in this equation for the performance metrics as we or most reviewers present them. We present power separately. Uh, this architecture has made us aware of how we might want to change that in the future. We have some cool ideas we're exploring actively. We're building new test suites for it. Should be really fun actually to do some efficiency numbers and we're working on that. But uh, because Intel, as we said in our 12900K review, officially stated to us on record that the difference with Windows 11 is primarily with efficiency, context switching, things like that with the cores, and not with the ultimate performance results. You shouldn't expect a big change. There is, however, one game where it started working and it didn't before, and there's one application that's eight years old, Cinebench R15, that was massively different. Blender cycles rendering, spawns render tiles per thread, and runs for an extended period of time. And that means Blender has a long test duration wherein any potential minor differences would be made obvious by getting exaggerated during that long test period. Here, however, the 12900K ended up at nine and a half minutes versus 9.4 
between the Windows 10 and 11 runs. There's not only no meaningful difference, but there's basically no difference, period. The 12600K had the same experience, with the Windows 10 variant requiring 14.7 minutes to complete the test, while the Windows 11 test pass required 15 minutes to complete the render. There's no difference here. If anything, we're seeing marginally better results on Windows 10, or at least a pattern of it that will form throughout this video. Chromium Code Compile required 49.4 minutes on Windows 11 for the 12900K, with a reduction of 1.6% to the 48.6 minute result on the Windows 10 test. Given the duration of this test, we'd need to run even more retests to really confirm if there is a difference. At best, there's zero change. At worst, it's functionally without meaning. The 12600K required 71.9 minutes with Windows 10 and 73 with Windows 11, which maximally allows an advantage to Windows 10 of 1.5%. That lines up with some previous results and shows at most an advantage in Windows 10 for raw performance with the 12 series, at least in these tests so far. Efficiency is not tested in our suite for these types of scenarios, so any change there is irrelevant. It won't appear in our original reviews anyway, and it certainly doesn't appear now where we're performance focused only. We've been using Cinebench R15 as part of our CPU test suite for years now as a quick error check. If a CPU scores differently this year than it did the previous six times we ran the batch of tests, we know something's wrong. We typically don't publish these results. They're just used internally to make sure we set the benches up right. R15 is eight years old, and it has been deprecated many times over. This time, R15 was one of two pieces of software that was clearly bugged with the 12th gen CPUs on Windows 10, though, the other being Total War Three Kingdoms, which is actual software people use. Moving to Windows 11 fixed the bug, and the 12900K jumped 61% in single-threaded performance. The 12900K scored 289 in Windows 11, with just 179 in Windows 10. This is clearly a bug, and it's not representative of the experience in any of our test suite except for R15 and, to some extent, Total War. The 12600K even outdid the Windows 10 12900K. In multi-threaded testing, the 12900K climbed a staggering 231% with Windows 11. In fact, the scheduling was so buggy with R15 specifically that the 12600K outperformed the 12900K in Windows 10 despite also being buggy. Ultimately, for real-world performance, our Blender benchmarks earlier, and we'll show those again, show that this doesn't bleed into every type of tile-based render, in spite of some of the similarities between Cinebench and Blender. And even then, Cinebench R23 was next on our list. In this one, with single-threaded testing, the 12900K ended up marginally better with Windows 10, with a score of 2038 versus 2000 CV marks. That's a 1.9% climb and was repeatable in our standard multi-pass testing, showing up every single time. The 12600K was closer and within range of run-to-run -run variants, but overall unexciting. This is far less controversial than the R15 results, and won't make a very good Reddit post for an angry onlooker, so we'd better move on quickly and try to find something that they can smear us with. Maybe it'll be R23 multi-threaded. That might give some ammunition. In this one, the 12900K ran at 27701 points with Windows 10, or 27415 with Windows 11. The difference nets to about 1%, favoring Windows 10 once more. This seems to be the average performance delta in most tests, at least aside from R15, and so is unexciting and as predicted. The 12600K posts similarly. The Windows 10 result is 1% ahead of the Windows 11 result. Once again, we've failed to find something noteworthy of massive controversy on Reddit, and therefore we are contractually obligated by Redditors to begin making outrageous statements about AMD and Intel. Moving on, in our quest to do this, we emailed Intel to see if there was an official reason for the admittedly small performance degradation going to Windows 11, meaning the performance dropped with Windows 11. Intel's response was this, quote, there are a number of variables going from Windows 10 to 11, and many of these can impact performance. The recommended security settings, VBS, Defender, etc., may be the biggest factor where there is more going on in the background in Windows 11 than Windows 10. These settings can consume CPU cycles that could have otherwise gone to application performance. This can apply to any workload, not just content creation, but with the highly threaded nature of many content creation workloads, it may have a bigger impact on those." End quote. Intel also sent us some of its internal numbers, confirming some of our own test results and it looks like they align. We didn't alter the Windows Defender or VBS settings on either Windows 10 or 11 beyond using Microsoft's own security dashboard to manually exclude some benchmark folders. So these are valid points, but we don't alter them if we can avoid it because a typical user wouldn't. Intel mentioned content creation, so Adobe Photoshop is next. 
This tests various types of workloads, including I.O. workloads, lower power work, and performance-focused tasks. In aggregate, the 12900K scored 1340 points with Windows 10 or 1316 with Windows 11. This has the Windows 10 results scoring 1.8% better than the Windows 11 results, and that's similar to the previous test, but we'll need to see this repeat a few times to start making judgment calls on whether this is variance or this is the real deficit from Windows 11 so far. As for the 12.6, that scored an aggregate 1129 points with Windows 10 or 1164 with 11. Once again, the difference is minimal at 3.4% improvement for Windows 11 over Windows 10. Looking deeper into the results, we saw that the GPU score is what climbed specifically. So maybe it's better scheduling between the CPU and the GPU. The filter score as an alternative remains nearly identical between Windows 10 and Windows 11. 7-zip compression testing had the 12900K the same between Windows 10 and Windows 11. There's basically zero difference here. Technically, the Windows 10 version is leading the Windows 11 version, once again showing that, at least in this instance, it's a little ahead. But it uh, goes back and forth as we just saw with Photoshop and the 12.6. The 12.600K experienced the same here, once again also tied to slightly ahead with Windows 10. In decompression testing for 7-zip, we saw the same. Minor differences tended to favor Windows 10 for both the 12.600K and the 12.900K CPUs. Time to move on to gaming benchmarks, where workloads are more mixed and less plainly intensive on just the CPU cores. In Counter-Strike Global Offensive, the Intel i9-12900K ran at 367 FPS average in our review testing with Windows 10, yet dropped to 344 with Windows 11. That's the biggest swing so far. That means the Windows 10 results had an advantage of 6.7%. So, so much for the comments about using Windows 11 being better for our reviews process. It's almost like we made a decision informed by decades of combined experience on the team instead of just blindly copying and pasting things we've skimmed on the internet or from Intel itself. The same was found for Windows 10 with the 12600K. We observed a 291 FPS average there versus 279 on Windows 11. That's an advantage for Win 10 of 4.3% in our testing, and that's for raw performance, which is what we look for. For reference, 1440p showed the same and remained CPU bound. The 12600K and 12900K both did better with Windows 10 than 11 here, including in the low frame time performance as represented by the 1% and 0.1% lows. In F1 2021 at 1080p, the 12900K on Windows 10 ran at 328 FPS average, leading the Win 11 result by 1.4%. That lines up with the production tests and some of the previous tests, and so far we've established a pattern here. The 12600K did similarly. Windows 10 ran at 322 to 313 on Windows 11. The lows are mostly the same between them with a slight proportional advantage for Windows 10. Far Cry 6 at 1080p had the 12900K with Windows 10 at 157 FPS average, 95 FPS 1% low, and 66 for 0.1% lows averaged. That has it ahead of the Windows 11 result in all three categories with the average leading by 7.9% on Windows 10. The 12600K was advantaged in averages for Windows 10, but did post an uncharacteristically low, low result at 32.6 versus 54.7 for the Windows 11 test. In Hitman 3, the 12900K ran at exactly the same level of performance between the two tests. We're also at another limiter here, not just the CPU, at 203 FPS average. There's no difference under this constrained condition at all for the 12900K. The 12.6 posted better results with Windows 10 than 11, including the lows. The average FPS uplift was 3.2% here. Rainbow Six is next in this one. The 12900K ranked the same in both tests, albeit with better lows than the Windows 11 benchmark, just not in a way that's meaningful at this level of performance. It was, however, a repeatable difference. We noticed less consistent run-to-run -run performance for the lows on Windows 10. They'd spike to the same numbers as the Windows 11 results sometimes, but wouldn't hold for every single pass. This also aligns with what Intel told us about how it expects that the consistency might be better in some instances on Windows 11, but not always. The 12600K ranked better with Windows 10 over 11 while maintaining mostly the same lows. GTA 5 comes back from the dead to test this scenario, mostly interesting since it's somewhat antiquated, just like Cinebench R15. The Windows 11 result had the 12900K a few FPS average ahead of the Windows 10 result. That's different here from some of the past games. It gained 2.5% in average FPS performance. The lows remained about the same. The 12.6 plotted similarly with Win 11 gaining a few FPS, amounting to a 2% lead over the Windows 10 test. GTA doesn't do much beyond eight threads and hardly uses four cores anyway, so this is an interesting resource management test. In Red Dead Redemption 2, the 12900K with Windows 10 ran 1.6% ahead of the Windows 11 result, so the previous GTA result didn't scale to a more recent Rockstar Rage game. The 12600K was about the same in both sets of tests. 
Finally, 3 Kingdoms was interesting because Alder Lake CP is actually finished this time. In this one, the 12900K is now a chart topper, and that's coming up from being unable to get past the menu previously. The result is 214 FPS average for the 12900K or 210 FPS average for the 12600K. We're likely running into memory or GPU constraints here at this point, as we usually do with this title at this level of performance. In conclusion then, first of all, our sincere apologies to commenters who put so much on the line when they spewed unresearched statements, they're not even facts, when they spewed unresearched comments and beliefs about Windows 11 with all their like, sorry to have ruined it for you. It's not some magic massive difference. The CPU is more or less rank about the same as they did before. Sometimes it's better, sometimes it's worse. Uh, but for the most part, it's, it's not hugely different. There are a couple games like CSGO where we saw a big difference, but it favored Windows 10, not Windows 11. So our numbers stand strong for our initial review. Just to make that abundantly clear, there is in fact a reason that we decided to use Windows 10 for testing. Uh, and it did involve, again, the, the many years of experience Patrick and I both have doing this type of thing and also collecting some data before we put the rest of the review together. So we did do some initial research on it. Now, we said in the 12900K review, and we stand by this as well, that it is 100% valid also to run a review with Windows 11 or Windows 10. It doesn't really matter to us what another reviewer used. They're both valid operating systems to test with. We think they're both defensible. As long as you understand which was used, that's all that matters. So then it's our understanding that the way the Windows scheduler interacts with the Intel thread director is the main thing that's supposed to have improved from Windows 10 to 11. One of the things we control in testing is the Windows power plant. This matters too. We use the high performance power plan. This is intentional. It's part of our controls for controlling variables, setting uh, power plan we understand and using it on everything. We use high performance. That may make some of the Windows 11 supposed benefits with Alder Lake or any CPU a little bit redundant. And uh, that also contributes to the results you'll see from one reviewer to the next. So controlling things like resizable BAR, controlling the uh, hardware acceleration for GPU scheduling, and controlling the power plan, those are three key variables within Windows alone that if you're going to compare data one to the next, and you really shouldn't, you should understand how everyone ran those three settings. And again, any combination of them is fine as long as it's explained and controlled uh, for the type of data the reviewer is trying to create. So that's the basics. Now, uh, we are doing some additional testing, as said earlier, where we're starting to combine some looks at efficiency with the performance. And uh, one thing we've done in the past is streaming benchmarks where we've run a video, we've live streamed the game, and we've played the game while capturing all of that data. Uh, so you get like video playback FPS, you get the live stream upload, um, sort of the, well, you get the FPS at the end of it if there's any dropped frames, you get the gaming FPS. We've done all that in the past. We're, we dropped it because it became uninteresting since every high-end CPU did just fine with that. Uh, and streaming has sort of a baseline where it matters, and, a, and then beyond that, it doesn't matter so much. So we're adding that back in for Alder Lake and AMD's direct competition, but we'll talk about that more later. Uh, anyway, that's the basics of it. The Alder Lake e-cores are focused on multitasking, so you may see more differences there. Uh, ultimately, however, our belief right now is that Windows 10 versus 11 doesn't matter a whole lot between the two. Windows 11 solved the compatibility issue with Total War, Three Kingdoms. We don't know if it'll get solved on Windows 10. Otherwise, Intel certainly is aware of it at this point and is researching it, uh, and probably so is Microsoft. But anyway, that's the, that's the differences. This is not a whole lot tends to favor Windows 10, as stated earlier, sometimes Windows 11, not that exciting. That's it for this one then. Thanks for watching as always. Subscribe for more. You'll get to see some of our moving vlogs from when we moved here while running the CPU test in uh, the next week or so. We also have more Alder Lake content, including overclocking that we're starting to research and get into. That'll be a lot of fun. Need to get a liquid nitrogen tank out here and do some of that. But that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more as always. You can go to store.gamersnexus.net if you'd like to grab one of our toolkits, mod mats, or other items, or patreon.com slash gamersnexus. I'll see you all next time.